Are you working on cleaning out your email and you know that you want to use folders, but you're not really sure how best to use them or what to name them? You're not alone. My clients have this same issue. So that's why I'm going to show you how to create folders and we'll talk about some different scenarios today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hi, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity, and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. This is the second video in our series on clearing your email. And today I'm going to show you how to create folders or labels, depending on what email program you have. And I will go through multiple different email programs, show you briefly how to create the folders. But the main thing we're going to talk about is some scenarios of how you might use folders. Some of you will want to use lots of folders, and some of you will just want to use a few and I'll talk about the difference and why you might want to do one or the other. First, let's talk about those scenarios. So in the first video, we talked about, does your inbox bother you? And this plays right into whether or not you're going to use folders. If your inbox bothers you, you don't like to have a lot going on in that inbox, you'd rather have closer to an inbox zero, then you're someone who's definitely going to need some folders. If you're going to have multiple folders, you want to think broader first. And what I mean is, for example, I am a business owner, so I do a lot of marketing. That is my broad bucket or folder. Um, I like to call them buckets. So marketing is that broader term. And then we can go more specific from in there and do subfolders. So that might be my blog <clears throat> or my newsletter or my social media. You can see that we start to get a lot of extra folders that would be at that main level and you'd have to scroll through them all the time if we went straight for those. But if we do a broader topic first, like marketing, then those subfolders are in a place where we can shrink that up and make it a lot easier to scroll through things. And it's easy to remember that my blog is my marketing. So I start by going to marketing and then find blog. The same idea works with organizing folders on your computer as well. And the key to your subfolders, if you're going to, let's use another example, if you have a kid in your family who has a lot going on. So maybe the kid's name is our broad topic. And then they have some sports and they have some dancing and maybe they are in another organization. Maybe they're a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout. Any of those things can all be subfolders underneath that broad topic of the child's name. Beyond that, you can have additional subfolders under those other topics that are under the kid's name. But what I want to caution you on is don't go too many levels deep because that can start to get cumbersome. You have to click multiple times to get down to where you want. So what I usually recommend is if you're having to scroll several times or go to another page, to find something within a folder, that's a good time to go ahead and think about making a subfolder. But if there's only a handful of things in there and you can see pretty quickly what's there, then don't take the time to create a subfolder for each and every type of email that comes in. Another scenario that may be true for you is that your inbox bothers you, but you don't wanna deal with a whole lot of folders. I have had many clients where we do something like have primary folders that are things that you know you're gonna to need to get to. And those things you do take the time to file. That may be something like a project that you're working on right now. It could be uh, emails from your boss, things like that. You can create folders for those. And then anything else could potentially be put into say a folder for the year or something that says old email. If it's something you think there's a chance you may need to find in the future, it may be easier to put it by year, but if you're pretty sure you're not really going to have to reference it, you want to keep it just in case, then maybe just have that old email or archive or some kind of folder like that. Now, I do caution you if you're going to use Outlook, they actually have an archive folder, so you could go ahead and use that. We won't go into the Outlook archive today. It does have some special features of its own. Uh, but just know that that is a folder that you can use if you want to, if you have it in your Outlook. A third and final scenario that I wanted to let you know about is, let's say you're someone who the inbox doesn't really bother you. You don't need to clean it out. 
but you do have certain emails that you need to put your hands on right away. It might be easier for you to go ahead and throw those into folders. So you may just have a few folders as we were talking about before, you may have a few folders, but then you might not need that old email or archive folder. You may just either keep things in your inbox or you might be able to use an archive feature that exists in some of the email programs. And you can just choose emails, archive them. They go into what I like to call Never Never Land. And then you can search and be able to find them again, but they're not in your inbox. They're not in a folder. It's just a place where you could reach it if you needed to. No matter which scenario you might use, you're gonna to need to know the steps to create your folders or your labels. And so now I will go through that in each of the different programs. We will start with Outlook on your computer, but we'll then go to Outlook on the web. Then we'll do Yahoo. And then I'll do Gmail because Gmail is pretty specific. And I wanna tell you a few extra pieces of information. And all of the times for these are below in the description of the video. So if you wanna skip straight to your email program, you should be able to do that pretty easily. What we're looking at right now is Outlook on the computer. So this is when you click on Outlook and within your computer, not a web browser. And basically I'm going to show you how to create a folder and or a subfolder. Most of the time I like to create my folders under the inbox, but you can do whatever you would like. You can do a right click on top of the main place, which should have your email address and do a new folder. That will put your folders in line with the list here, like your drafts and sent items and things like that. I like to build my structure under the inbox. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you're the most comfortable with. When you right click, and if you are on a Mac, you may need to do a two finger tap, depending on what kind of mouse you have. You can click on new folder. You can see it brings it up right here, ready for you to type. I'm just gonna put a test folder. And when I hit enter, you can see it drops it right here under my inbox. You can see there are a few other folders that were down here that were in the main area. And I'll show you the difference there. If I create a folder, and we're going to test the area. Then you can see, oh, it's not here. It dropped down here by my test main folder. So that's how you do folders in here. And a subfolder, like we were talking about different levels, test is my main level, and maybe I need subtest. So I'm gonna right click on that folder, create a new folder, and you can see how it's tabbed right here. And so I'm gonna say subtest, hit enter. And then now I have a nested or subfolder. And I can use this little arrow right here to shrink that up so that it doesn't take up as much space. And you can see that's also why I like to have things under my inbox because I can shrink that up as well. Now we'll look at Outlook on the web. This is slightly different. It has some things that are similar and some things that are not. This is when you get to Outlook from a web browser. Here, you can also do the right click and create a subfolder. Again, you can create it under your inbox if you want to from here. The easiest way, if you just want to have it in line with everything else, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see this new folder. It's a blue link. We click that. It looks very similar to what we saw in Outlook. And you can see actually this, these things came from my other Outlook, so I have to come up with something else, test two. When I hit enter, you can see it drops it right there in the list with everything else. And again, I can open up the inbox. Here's the test that I just did in the other Outlook. If I create a subfolder here, we'll do my example that I was talking about previously, marketing. And you can see that's under the inbox. And that's because I right clicked on the inbox and I did a new subfolder. And again, I can shrink this down to make it disappear. And so if you have things that are disappearing, make sure that you watch these little arrows or carrots as you can call them. If the carrot is down, it's showing you everything. But if the carrot is to the right, then it's hiding what's underneath it. Now we'll look at creating folders in Yahoo. In Yahoo, it's pretty straightforward. They have right over here a new folder button. 
and it's very similar to the Outlook versions where something pops up that looks like this. And we're going to do a test here. I'm going to hit enter and it'll show up in alphabetical order with the rest. And then here, if you hover over a folder, there's a down arrow and you can choose to rename, move, and it's the same thing in the Outlook versions. If you right click, you'll have all these same types of options. Here is where they have create subfolder. So again, I got to this by hovering and then going to their little arrow and I can create a subfolder. Enter. And now you can see I have one of those carrots next to test. And if I click that so that it's pointing to the right, it hides what's underneath it. And I can click it again to open that up. And so it doesn't really indent it as much in Yahoo, but this is a subfolder of the one above it. And you know that by the little carrot. Lastly, we'll talk about Gmail. I want to take a moment before we work on this one to talk about it. Gmail uses something called labels. And it still creates folders, which you can see on the left, but you see there's a label next to it, not a folder. And I kind of use these things interchangeably in Gmail, label and folder. Sometimes I'll call them a label folder. And that's just so you know that there can be some functions that are the same, but labels actually give you an additional function where you can have multiple labels on one email. So on this email, I could choose to have two of these labels that I have listed over here. So first of all, let's talk about how to create one. I find it easiest to pick your email that you need to create a label folder for. And if you check the box or if you're inside the email, you can see our icons right here are the same. If I go into the email or if I check the box, these icons appear. So this is a very dynamic program where things don't appear until you take some action. And what we want to do here is if you're trying to clean out your inbox and move things into your label folder, you would choose this little guy right here, which is move to. If you just want to label things and keep them in your inbox, that's this one here that is labels. I am working on and we are working on in this series, clearing out our inbox. So I'm going to choose this one. I would move to, I can choose one of the label folders I've already created or I can create a new one. So I'm gonna create a new one called test. And here is where our nesting or subfolders can happen. If I know that test should be a subfolder under something else, I can click this and then I find what's called the parent folder. And that's just the primary folder that's above the new folder that I'm creating. In this case, I want it to be a primary folder, so I don't want to nest it under anything. And I'm going to create that. And you can see since I chose the move to action, that email disappeared from the inbox and it's now in my test label folder. And the key with labels is if I open the email, you can see right up here, there's a little gray and you can choose to make these different colors, a little gray thing that gives me the label for this email. And I can have multiples of those. So if I needed more than just test, I can also choose labels and then I can add another. So let's say this has to do with disaster plans and I can apply that and see it right away pops up here. That's how labels are different. And so right now I am looking at the test label, but if I go up to the disaster plans, I can also see that same email right here. So that's how labels work in Gmail. Another good way to create a sub label is to, and this is very similar to Yahoo, you can hover over one of the label folders on the left, do the little dots, vertical dots, and here we can add a sub label. And then this is, you're very familiar with what this looks like. We've already seen this, give it a name. It already did your nesting piece because you started from the parent folder. And you can see over here, very similar to all the other programs. You have a little carrot that you can open and close. 
Remember, if it's pointing to the right, it's closed. If it's pointing down, it's open and you're seeing everything underneath it. And they do have them indented here in Gmail. No matter how you choose to use your folders or how many you choose to use, it's important to sit down and think it through before you start creating your folder structure. You can save yourself a lot of time if you think about it beforehand and realize, you know, I really don't reference a whole lot of my emails. So maybe you're someone who creates those, you know, three to five major folders that are, I'm going to reference these all the time. And then you have another one that is just for the year or for the old emails. And especially if you're someone who doesn't mind having some things going on in your inbox. You don't mind having a lot of emails in there. You don't want to spend a lot of time creating the folders. And especially if you're not someone who wants to use them, it feels, if it feels overwhelming and cumbersome, then that may not be how you want to do it. So have that conversation with yourself before you start and then start creating whatever folders you need. In our next video, we'll be talking about how to move large groups of emails into the folders or labels that we have created. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. You can also put questions there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please give the video a thumbs up if you've learned something from it or you enjoyed it. And you can also share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. Be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. When you do that, a bell icon will show up. This is if you would like to receive notifications each time a new video is posted. If you're following along on our series and would like to know when the new videos post, you'll want to make sure to click the bell. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.